Ecclesiastes chapter 6. There is an evil which I have seen so witnessed by Solomon under the sun. Again, that's the whole theme of the book. Life on this earth, under the sun. You don't go any higher than the sun. And it is common among men. So Solomon seen this and he says, hey, common. Happens quite often. A man to whom God has given riches, wealth, and honor. You get that? There are there is riches and there's wealth and there's honor given by God. Not all riches and wealth and honors of the devil. Though most cases it is used to glorify the devil. But there are riches and wealth and honor by God to man. And he said there's an evil that's common among men in riches, wealth, and honors. But let's look at what the verse says, the context. So that he wanted nothing for his soul of all that he desired. So he's got riches, he's got wealth, and he's got honor. He has no wants. Everything's provided. And it's not just Solomon. Because at the end of verse 1, he says, men, plural. They've got enough riches of God, enough wealth of God, enough honor of God. They don't have any need. Yet God giveth him not power to eat thereof. And we've talked about this in Proverbs and Book of Ecclesiastes. Like I said, I know there are medical conditions given by God. Given as an evil because this is not right. Given to a man is given to a man by judgment. It's given to a man by sinful pleasures. It's given to a man by worrying anxieties, ulcers. And he's got the riches. He's got the wealth. He's got the honor. He's got everything he wants. But he can't eat. And I got this under, under the information given to me in school, socialism. Socialism is the man's earn it. He's got it. It's God given. But, but a stranger eat it. it. It's given to somebody else. Now the stranger... I don't know if Solomon is talking about a Gentile, because to the to the Gent to the Jewish Hebrew Israelite stranger would be Gentiles. This is vanity, emptiness, and it's an evil disease that a man can't eat. And he says that God giveth him not power to eat thereof so there, there's there's a power of God that the man can't enjoy his riches in his food and if you're going to put the application of social so, yeah, socialism then socialism is of God <coughs> it's going to be the antichrist government and if God allowed this to happen, socialism, as much as you hate it, when you badmouth socialism, it's of God. When you badmouth your political party that's in office and uh, the one that you don't want is in office, the opposite of your party is in office and you're not happy, you're ranking against God. If a man beget a hundred children, that's a lot of children, and live many years, 
so that the days of his years be many. He's got a lot of years. He's got a lot of days. And his soul be not filled with good. He, he's, he's got evil. He's got trouble. He's got problems. He got anxiety. He's just got terrors and troubles. And, and it's not good. Job didn't have it good for a while, but his whole entire life wasn't terrible. And also, also, that he has no burial. Now, a burial amongst the Jews is very serious. If you die and there's no burial for your body, that's, that's bad news. That's horrible. That's why early in, in the American army, fighting World War II and overseas, I mean, if you had mass amount of soldiers killed, they would build a common hole and, you know, put all the soldiers and then bury them over with, with bulldozers. I mean, they're getting a burial. Well, if your body's laying out on the ground and, and the animals eat of it and no one cares for your body, that's horrible. I say, Solomon says, his own remark, I say, a little side note by Solomon, that an untimely birth is better than he. Better you, better you were born dead than live an entire life having all kinds of children and having all kinds of years, having all kinds of days, and you still get, you know, there's, there's bad things in your life. And if you die and there's no grave for you, no burial, no dirt, no... Uh, septica or anything like that. You know, I wonder if Joseph of Artemis, if he didn't come, if they were, if they would have buried Jesus' body. Though the Bible says he must die, suffer and die, and be buried according to scriptures, and rose in three days and three nights according to the scriptures. I, I would assume, I would think that the Jewish people would have left his body. Don't give him no burial. He, he's a misfit. He, he's out of whack. He's death, burial, and resurrection. They didn't bury him. Joseph and Armenians didn't give him his tomb. That, that would defile the scriptures. That would defile the prophecy. For he cometh in with vanity, emptiness, no he said, listen, early, he said, listen, you come naked. The only thing a baby comes into this world is, is with a bill. You got to pay somebody for delivery. And departeth in darkness, and his name shall be covered with darkness. Darkness is the grave. The tomb, the coffin. Solomon's looking at the sun. He's looking at death. You close your eyes, darkness. We're not looking at the soul. We're not, we already saw something with the spirit, but we're not looking at the eternal life. We're looking at what is under the sun, and that man dies, he closes his eyes, and darkness. And that's true. That's what your body sees, your flesh. Moreover, he has not seen the sun, nor know anything. This has more rest than others. And he's been talking about the untimely birth. Untimely birth, the, the child that dies in the womb or the child that, that, that dies a birth. He said, no troubles, no problem, doesn't see nothing, hasn't seen nothing. He goes into, he comes into darkness and goes with darkness instantly. That's what Job said. You know, these people, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. You know, Jeremiah and Job cursed the day they were born. Solomon said it'd be better for an untimely birth than add birth years. You know that, that the, the birthday in, the ba in, in, in Genesis, a man was hung. You know, the birthday in the gospel, a man lost his head. How can you get up in a, in a Christian church of a Bible believers and say, let's sing happy birthday. 
You only were born once. And we're going to celebrate the birthday you were born into sin. And we never, never celebrate the new birth. Something wrong. And then we got, we're coming up Thanksgiving. Then we're going to celebrate the birthday of Jesus, December 25th. And the Bible never says it's December 25th. Well, I know it's not, I know, we know December 25th is not Jesus' birthday, but we're going to have a birthday party for Jesus anyway. You gone cuckoo. Every hour, cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. And it's to show us what value the Jews put on a burial. If you're not, if you're going to live your entire life and you're going to die and your body's going to be out in the field for the buzzards and the, and the animals, it'd just be better if you were born dead. Now, the value that the Americans put on, we put a high value on death and burial upon those who sell the instruments of death and burial. The graveyard, the casket, the service, the limousine, the blah, 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 blah. Yea, though he live a thousand years, twice told to double the thousand years, yet has he seen no good, do not all go to one place. Now, where is that one place? Death. Not heaven, it's not hell. It's not Abraham's bosom. We're not talking about that. Where does the human body go? In a grave. And woe be when he dies, he doesn't go to the grave, he just lays out in the, out in the ground. Darkness. He closes his eyes. I don't think it was darkness the day that Jesus came to the dying thief in Abraham's bosom. He said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I bet you it was great light. And it had to be great light on Abraham's side because the rich man saw Abraham. The rich man saw Lazarus. Now hell is dark. Abraham's bosom was light because he saw Abraham. He saw Lazarus. And in Egypt, the, the children of God had light. And the children against God had darkness. All the labor of man is for his mouth. What's the most commodity you need in life? You need food. You can live without the cell phone. You can live without the automobile. But you can't live without food. If the most desire of a man If, and I'm not doing any prophesying or anything like that, if the world would come be, if there's no no more electricity, and there are places in the world today, there is no electricity, and there is no transportation, there are places in the world where there's no transportation, a cell phone ain't going to do you no good. And the deep recesses of the world of Africa and South America, your cell, your smartphone ain't going to do you nothing. You're going to need food. You're going to need air, water, and food. Jesus said to disciples, with food and raiment, let us be content. That's what Solomon's saying. Jesus backed up Ecclesiastes. And yet, the appetite is not full. <laughs> Have yourself a good, hearty breakfast. Sometime later that day, you're going to be hungry again. And then you'll be hungry again. And then you'll be hungry again. For what 
has a wise more than a fool? What has the poor that knoweth to walk before the living? I mean, here is the extremes. Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Rationalism. That which has been named philosophy, isms, you know, all the isms of life, evolutionism, uh, socialism, everything that has been given a name. And it's known that it is a, that it is man, run that back to the vanity of verse 9. Neither may, neither may he contend with him that is mightier God than he. You know, oh, I see everything with my eyes and the desire. It's vanity. It's vexation. It's an irritation. And we got all these great names. We got all these great titles and all these, these abbreviations. You're going to face God one day. Every man that has taught evolution, professor, PhD, doctor, instructor, is going to face God, the creator, one day. All the men and women that have taught parents to defy the scriptures on how to raise their children. In defiance of what God in his word said, they're going to face God one day in judgment. And what they said and what they taught and everything of economics and, and all the philosophers and all the socialism and all the isms that there is to be. You're going to face God one day. And you're going to have to give an account of everything. And Jesus said, every idle word shall man, not just to save. But the laws shall give it account. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, skepticism. What is man the better? There are many things out there, and they're vanity. What is your classic automobile or your lux luxury automobile? What's that going to do you on the street of New Jerusalem? What is all your stock certificates and your bank account and your investment and your 401ks and your IRA? What's all that going to do? When you are in the pit of the lake of fire that burns forever. What is your major corporations and your CEOs? <clears throat> What's that going to do for you in the after eternal life? Saved a lot. It's going to do you nothing. And the more you add to it, the more vain it is. And Solomon is writing under the sun. He's saying, you know what? You, you are the CEO. You are D of the all the D's to be D, D. And what have we been reading for six chapters? You're going to die. Lights are going out and you're going in a hole. What good did it do you? I like tomatoes and cucumbers. I'm going to have a lot. I have had a lot of cucumbers and tomatoes in my life. Lord willing, I'm going to have a lot more cucumbers and tomatoes in my life. But what are the cucumbers and tomatoes going to do for me with this body that's in the grave and my soul will be with God? 
What are tomatoes and cucumbers going to do for me on the street of New Jerusalem? I got a computer right now. I'm talking in front of a tablet. I'm talking in front of a computer. What's that going to prove? All these messages that got out and got people saved and had Christians to grow and learn. That will be good in eternal life. I have one video game I play, one of the Facebook games. Uh, I, what's that good? That ain't going to do you no good at all. I write commentary. I update my prayer list. I update dated things I find in the Bible. I, I, I do written things and, and all that. What's that going to count in glory? All the people that got saved and all the people that got help and were blessed by that work. And material goods. I got yellow. I got yellow M and M guy here right by my desk. I like him. Yellow M and M guy is not going to heaven. And the day I drop dead, if the Lord tarries, M and M guy is going to probably end up in the garbage. I know because I've had two wives die, and I have to go through their stuff. And a lot of their stuff that they thought were important and that it was a value to them, it's going to go in the garbage. And there's coming a day the Lord tarries that I die. Somebody's going to go through my stuff and they're going to throw that out. I had, wow, I really like that. That was <coughs> to them vanity. I don't know why he kept this. I, I said that multiple times. Like I said, I had two wives that I'd be going through their stuff. Why did they keep this? There was a reason why they kept it. But to somebody else, vanity. And the, the chorus of Solomon, when we're going through 12 chapters, we're halfway through now. A man that writes under the sun. You put all your gusto. You're going to a grave. And the, whatever you got when you die, you don't know who you're leaving it to. You don't know what's going to happen with it. For who knoweth what is good for a man in this life? To know God and to know God's will in your life. That's. You know it, it's funny. When you get that verse. And you get an ailment. Something wrong. And now here comes all the people with the opinion. Well you know you, you, you got to eat less of this. Well you need this herbal treatment. You need to rub this on. You need to burn this. You need to take this. You need to do that. You're not doing enough of this. You're not doing enough of that. Yeah. That's, that's what that verse is saying. There are a lot of sideline doctors. They're going to diagnose and, and find your ailment. All the days of his life, I mean, all the days of his vain life, which he spendeth as a shadow. Life is quick. And life is a shadow. What is a shadow? It's just a dark spot. And when the sun goes, there's no more dark spot. All dark. And your favorite preacher, your favorite person is going to die. And in glory, we're going to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, not your preacher. Your marvelous, great church building and how great your church is in the Laodicean church age. We're going to go to glory. We're going to stand before God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Your church building and property is not going to be there. And it's not how great I am, it's how great thou art. For who can tell a man 
what shall be after him? The eternal life under the sun. Solomon said, okay, that man died. What do you think about it? In the Old Testament and under the law, you did not know if a man went to Abraham's bosom or hell. It was a quite a shock that, that for the disciples that Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a, a, eye of a needle than a rich man to enter glory. And those disciples said, what? I mean, he's rich. He's had to be right with God. Verse 2, riches, wealth, and honor come from God. Today we can tell, man gets saved, we, he gets on fire, he serves the Lord, he's got the works, James says, faith and works, not for salvation. But then again, we can't say. Let's say you got a man and he's two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, he's saved and he's not doing nothing for the Lord, he's backslidden. Now, I can treat that man as lost, I think. I don't know. That's the same st statement song. We don't know. I can I can talk to somebody, and I can try to figure somebody out and, and say, well, you know what? I really don't think you're saved, and I can deal, and I've done, I deal with you as a lost man. I don't know. When it comes to a man's soul, there's three people that are assured of your salvation. God, the devil, and yourself, and no one else. And the day comes when you close your eyes and you're either absent from the body or you wake up in hell. And who knows? You may have thought somebody was saved and they're in hell. You may have thought somebody's in hell, and they're actually in heaven. We don't know.